All right, welcome back. In this lecture, we begin coverage of the first type of linear regression model that we'll be looking at in this course, specifically the simple linear regression model. Here's an outline of what we'll be looking at in this lecture. We'll start off with a brief review where we look at the purpose of linear regression. We'll then talk about the types of variables involved in linear regression and also the components of linear regression models. We'll also talk about the types of linear regression. We'll then look at the general univariate linear regression model. From there, we'll specialize and start looking at the simple linear regression model. We'll look at the form of the simple linear regression model. We'll look at the components of the simple linear regression model and also identify the parameters in the simple linear regression model. We'll also look at what is meant by the word linear in the name simple linear regression. And then we'll talk about the fact that models, all models, are abstractions. So let's first start off by looking at the purpose of linear regression. So statistical modeling in general is used to investigate and quantify the relationship between one or more response variables and one or more explanatory variables. The idea is we have a vector of one or more response variables and we model those as some function f of the explanatory variables that are available. Explanatory variables are used to model the variability in, explain the behavior of, or predict the value of one or more response variables of interest. Now linear regression can be used to accomplish each of these goals. So the purpose of linear regression is to establish and quantify the relationship between one or more response variables and one or more explanatory variables in order to model the variability in, explain the behavior of, and or predict the value of one or more response variables. Now the variables in a linear regression model can be categorized into two broad types, response variables and explanatory variables. The response variables are those variables whose variability we want to understand and or whose values we want to predict. The explanatory variables are those variables that we're using to uh, capture and understand the variability in the response and or predict the values of the response. Now response variables are also called outcome variables, for example, in health studies. And in mathematics courses and in engineering uh, context, they're often called uh, dependent variables. Explanatory variables are also called predictor variables. And in mathematically oriented uh, classes, they're often called independent variables. Now, I'll typically uh, use the terms response variable and explanatory variable in my lecture notes and my lectures. Next, let's talk about what we might call the components of linear regression models. So, as we've seen, we have variables. We have uh, response variables and explanatory variables. We can have one or more response variable and we would have one or more explanatory variable. In addition, we also have uh, error terms. We have one error term for every response variable. A model also contains parameters, and there are uh, several different types. We have what we might call the beta parameters. So the beta parameters would consist of one or more intercepts. We would have one intercept for each response variable in the model. We also have slope coefficients. We have one slope coefficient for each explanatory variable in the model. There are also error variances. There's an error variance for each error term in the model. And then finally, there are error covariances. There are covariance terms, one covariance term uh, between each pair of error terms 
in the model. Next, let's look at the types of linear regression. So we can categorize types of linear regression by looking at the number of response variables in the model and the number of explanatory variables in the model. Now, if a linear regression model has one response variable, it is a univariate linear regression. If a linear regression model has more than one response variable, it's called a multivariate linear regression. Looking at rows, if a regression model has one explanatory variable, it's a type of simple linear regression. And then if a model has uh, more than one explanatory variable, it's a type of multiple linear regression. Now in this course, we focus exclusively on univariate linear regression, that is uh, linear regression models that have just one response variable. In this particular module that we're now starting, our topic is going to be univariate simple linear regression models because we're going to be looking at univariate linear regression models that have just one explanatory variable. Okay, next, let's look at the general univariate linear regression model. So this is the form of the general linear regression model. In particular, this is a linear regression model that has k explanatory variables. And so we have y equal to beta 0 plus the sum j going from 1 up to k, where k is the number of explanatory variables, beta j times x sub j, and then plus epsilon. And so here are the components of, the, of this linear regression model. So y is the response variable. And then the uh, expression involving the betas, beta 0 plus the sum j going from 1 to k of beta j times x sub j, that's called the deterministic part of the model. And then finally, the uh, epsilon at the end, that's called the random part of the model. And so again, beta 0 plus the sum j going from 1 to k of beta j times x sub j is called the deterministic part of the model. And it's called this because once the values of the explanatory variables are specified, the, the value of this uh, part of the model is determined. On the other hand, the epsilon is the random part of the model. All right, it's a random variable or considered to be a random variable. And the uh, epsilon, this random part of the model, also called the error term in the model, allows for deviations of the response variable from uh, the value that uh, the deterministic part of the model takes on. And so when we combine those two pieces, the deterministic part of the model and the uh, random part of the model, the error term, add those together, okay, that gives us the response. But notice that even when the values of the explanatory variables are specified, uh, that is, uh, even when the values of the x's are known, the value of the response is not determined. And it's not determined because we have that error term uh, that's adding some random noise uh, to that deterministic component. And so the response variable uh, needs to be observed. And so let's look at the observed and unobserved parts of the linear regression model. So the response variable is uh, observed, it's observable, all right? And so once it's been observed, its value is known. Likewise, the explanatory variables, x1 through x sub k, are observable. And so once the data have been observed, uh, the x's are known as well. On the other hand, the beta parameters, so beta 0, beta 1, and so forth up to beta sub k, are unobservable. And so even once we observe our data, the betas are unknown. In addition, the error term, epsilon, is unobservable, so it's unknown. And then finally, the error variance, uh, sigma squared, which is the variance of the epsilon term, uh, that is unobservable, and so it's unknown as well. 
And so you can see here that uh, when we think about the model, we can think about um, uh, the types of variables. We can think about the various components, the deterministic component, the random component. We can think about it in terms of what's observable and what's uh, unobservable. So looking at it pictorially, all right, here we have the uh, general form of the uh, linear model. And um, <clears throat> we can see uh, here which parts of this are observable and which are unobservable. So again, the Y, uh, the response, is observable, and the Xs are observable, but everything else in the model is unobservable. All right, next, let's look at the special case of the general linear regression model. That is the simple linear regression model. So the simple linear regression model is a special case of the general linear regression model in which the number of explanatory variables is k equal to 1. And so again, this is the form of the general linear regression model with k explanatory variables. And when we have only one explanatory variable, only one x, this is what we get. So this is the uh, general form of the simple linear regression model. We might call this the uh, canonical form of the simple linear regression model. Now notice that uh, I don't have a subscript on the x. In the previous slide, when we were talking about the general linear regression model, where we've got more than one explanatory variable, I needed to be able to differentiate between the different explanatory variables, and I did that using a subscript. But since we only have one explanatory variable in the simple linear regression model, I can remove that subscript because there's, uh, it's not needed. So let's look at the components of the simple linear regression model. So <clears throat> the beta 0 plus beta 1 times x, that is the deterministic part of the model. Again, it's called this because once the values of uh, the explanatory variable, x in this case, uh, has been specified, then the value uh, of that component is going to be determined. The epsilon, again, is the random part of the model. And again, this allows for the response variable to uh, be different from uh, the value of the deterministic part of the model. And that's necessary <coughs> because uh, the response variable is is uh, uh, never going to be exactly equal to, or at least very rarely, ever going to be equal to uh, the deterministic part of the model. And so once we add those two pieces together, again, uh, even if we know the value of the explanatory variable, we're not going to know uh, necessarily the, <clears throat> or be able to predict with complete accuracy the value of the response, okay, because uh, there's unexplained variability uh, which is captured by and represented by the error term in this model. And so uh, when we collect data, uh, we need to observe not only the explanatory variable, but also the response. And so looking at it pictorially, uh, we see here that uh, the y variable that is a response variable. Uh, the beta 0 plus beta 1 times x constitutes the deterministic part of the model. And then the epsilon is the random part of the model. We can also think about uh, the different components of the simple linear regression model in terms of what's observed and what's unobserved. So the response variable, again, is observable. And so once we've observed our data, the value of the response will be known. Likewise, the explanatory variable, x, or x1 as I've got it here, uh, is observable. And so again, once the data have been observed, the value of x, the explanatory variable, will be known. On the other hand, the beta parameters, and we only have two of them in the simple linear regression model, beta 0 and beta 1, those are unobservable. And so even when we have uh, observed our data, uh, their values will be unknown. The error term epsilon is unobservable. So even once we, even when we have uh, observed our data, uh, the error term, the exact value of the error term is unknown. And finally, the error variance, sigma squared, uh, 
which again is the variance of the error term epsilon, that's unobservable, and so that's going to be uh, unknown as well. And so uh, looking at it pictorially, uh, we see that uh, what's observable is the response variable and the explanatory variable x, while the betas, beta 0 and beta 1, as well as the epsilon, are unobservable. Now, the reason I bring this up, um, in particular what's observable and what's uh, not observable, is that uh, different types of models uh, have different kinds of uh, objects being observable. And so, for example, if you were taking a multivariate class and studying factor analysis, um, what is observable is going to be different from what's observable in the uh, typical uh, linear regression type of environment. So I just wanted to uh, bring this out uh, to uh, help us understand what's observable and what's not observable and to make the distinction between linear regression models and other kinds of models uh, that are uh, very widely used, such as factor analysis models. So we've looked at the general form of the simple linear regression model. Now let's uh, denote the model that corresponds to each experimental unit. And suppose that we have a sample of n bivariate observations. So a set of observations, a set of uh, bivariate ordered pairs, um, ordered pairs being y sub i and x sub i, i going from 1 to n. So y1, x1, y2, x2, and so forth up to yn, xn, where y sub i is the observed value of a response variable, and x sub i is the observed value of an explanatory variable measured on the ith experimental unit. The simple linear regression model for the ith experimental unit is represented by including subscripts on the parts of the model that are specific to the experimental unit. Those parts being the response variable, the explanatory variable, and the error term. And so when we're dealing with or when we're trying to represent uh, the model for each experimental unit or each subject, we need to, at that point, include uh, subscripts. And so uh, this shows how we do it. So y sub i being equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x sub i plus epsilon sub i. So again, the y sub i and the x sub i are the uh, bivariate uh, observations uh, measured on the various experimental units, and the epsilon sub i's are the individual error terms, one error term for each experimental unit. Okay, here i going from 1 to n, where n is the number of experimental units. Notice that we have not subscripted the betas. All right, beta 0 is not subscripted, nor is beta 1. So there are three parameters in this simple linear regression model. Beta 0, which is the y-intercept of the deterministic part of the model. Beta 1, which is the slope of the deterministic part of the model. And then the final parameter, the third parameter, is sigma squared, which is the variance of the model error term. That is, sigma squared is equal to the variance of epsilon. And so we can write out the uh, individual models for uh, each of the uh, n experimental units, as shown on this slide. And so you can see here that we have n regression equations, y1 equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus epsilon sub 1, y2 equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x2 plus epsilon sub 2, and so on, down to the uh, regression model for the nth experimental unit, uh, y sub n equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x sub n plus epsilon sub n. Now again note that in this model, the beta parameters, beta 0 and beta 1, are not subscripted, 
and that's because they are assumed to be the same for all experimental units. They're considered to be fixed effects that do not vary from one experimental unit to another. Now again, I'm bringing this up to distinguish this from other types of models. All right, uh, this uh, type of uh, model, okay, or this, this is a characteristic of uh, certain types of linear regression models, uh, that being the, the uh, beta parameters, um, being fixed effects that do not vary from one experimental unit to another. There are certain types of models, and in particular, uh, even some uh, regression type of models, um, where the beta parameters are allowed to vary from one subject to another. Those are typically uh, called random coefficients models. All right, and so, uh, but that's, that's outside the context of what we're going to do, but I <clears throat> you know, feel like we do need to uh, identify the fact that these beta parameters in the context of what we're doing, uh, at least in this uh, particular module with simple linear regression, and really throughout most of the course, um, the beta parameters are going to be considered fixed effects that are the same from one experimental unit to another. And then finally, the variance of the error terms, sigma squared, is also assumed to be the same for all the experimental units. Now, that's an assumption. Um, that assumption will need to be tested. And so we'll look at uh, how to test that assumption uh, later on in the course. So as we said, in the simple linear regression model, there are three parameters, beta zero, beta one, and sigma squared. These parameters are unknown, as we discussed, and so we must estimate these uh, parameters from the data, the data being uh, the n-ordered pairs that we discussed previously. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about what is meant by the word linear in the name linear or simple linear regression. So like all linear regression models, the simple linear regression model is a linear model. Now note that in the general representation or the canonical representation of the simple linear regression model, y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus epsilon, the deterministic component beta 0 plus beta 1 times x is linear in X, but this is not what makes this a linear model. Rather, what makes this a linear model is that the deterministic component is linear in the betas. So beta zero plus beta one X is linear in the betas, and that's what makes this a linear model. So for example, uh, let's take a look at another slightly different model, Y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x squared plus epsilon. Now, even though the deterministic component uh, of this model is nonlinear in x, and in particular, it's quadratic in x, this is a linear, or it, the deterministic component is linear in the betas, and so this is, uh, this is a type of linear model. In fact, it's a simple linear regression model because it has only one explanatory variable, namely x squared. If we were to define a uh, derived variable, uh, w, as being x squared, and then re-express the model above in terms of this new variable, uh, w, then we would get y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times w plus epsilon, which we see is of the simple linear regression canonical form. Okay, finally, let's talk about models as abstractions. So all models, by definition, really, are abstractions and simplifications of the real-world processes that they are used to represent. Now, this is necessarily the case because Real-world processes are often too complex to understand completely. Well, now, why is that? Well, it may be impossible to identify all the factors that uh, impact a response. Um, 
even if we could identify all the factors, the relationships between the response and the factors uh, may be quite complex. Even if we do understand the complex process completely, we more than likely will not be able to collect the data needed for perfect prediction. Um, and this can occur for a variety of reasons, a couple of which would be that uh, we don't have the ability to uh, uh, measure the factors uh, that impact the response. Or it may be too expensive in terms of time, money, and so forth to measure all of the factors uh, that impact uh, the response. As an example, suppose that we are interested in predicting a response variable y. Now suppose further that there are capital N factors that impact the response. The number of factors cap N may be quite large. Let's denote these factors by x1, x2, and so forth up to x sub n. And we're supposing here that these are the only factors that impact the response. Then for given values of these factors, the response uh, would be given deterministically by what we might call the perfect predictor shown here. y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus and so forth out to plus beta n uh, times xn. Now note that there is no error term in this representation because we are assuming that these capital N factors are the only factors that impact the response and that they impact the response in this additive way. If the values of the beta parameters were known and the factors, the x's, were identified and able to be measured without error, then we could conceivably at least predict the exact value of the response variable y perfectly by evaluating this perfect predictor. In reality, however, most factors impacting a response are either unknown or unmeasurable for a variety of reasons. And because of this, the right-hand side of this expression, that, that perfect predictor, cannot be evaluated. Now to bring this into the context of simple linear regression, suppose that of these capital N factors, only factor x1 is known, uh, is, has been identified, and is uh, measurable without error. Then the model can be re-expressed in the following way. y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus epsilon, which you'll recognize as the simple linear regression model with error term given by epsilon, which is the remainder of uh, that expression of the perfect predictor that we don't have information about. So epsilon equal to beta 0 times x2 plus and so forth out to beta n times x sub n. And this explicitly shows that the error term, epsilon, captures all unexplained sources of variation in the response. In other words, it captures the variation due to the impact of all factors uh, affecting the response that are unknown or uh, unmeasurable and therefore not contained in the model. All right, so that wraps up uh, this lecture video. Uh, in the next lecture video, we're going to look at how to estimate the parameters in the simple linear regression model. So I'll see you then.